It's Pete Thorne, and welcome to my studio. I'm speaking in this exceptionally deep voice because this is a demo for microphones, so it feels appropriate. This is my voiceover voice in a land before time. I want to do voiceover. Maybe? Do you think I could do it? Another career? Anyway, sorry. This is a demo for the brand new Sterling Microphones ST159 large diaphragm multi-pattern condenser microphone, and also this one right here. This is the uh, ST170 active ribbon microphone. So I used these uh, terrific mics to capture all the guitars in the song at the beginning of the video. And I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of that now and uh, uh, tell you a little bit more about these microphones. So first of all, let's start with, let's start with this guy, the active uh, ribbon, the ST170. This is a terrific sounding microphone. I used it on uh, all the electric guitar parts. Spaced back from uh, the speaker cabinets about, oh, I would say about a foot or a foot and a half back. Um, it's kind of nice with ribbon microphones. You can get a nice full natural sound and get them back further from the cabinet generally, I find, than mini dynamic mics, which, which can start to sound a little squirrely or mid rangey or weird when you back them off. Uh, with, with a ribbon mic, it can be really nice to back it up about a foot or something like that, maybe even more. Uh, so I did that and sounded just terrific, really, really natural. Um, lots of clarity on this microphone, which is nice. Sometimes ribbon mics I find are dark and they need uh, the help of maybe a dynamic mic, you know, blending in a, a 57 or something like that with them can be helpful. And nothing saying that you couldn't do that with this mic, but it wasn't at all necessary in those tracks uh, in the song at the beginning of the video. I found just a ton of clarity, really nice top end with this microphone. And the other thing about it is because it's active, it has just a ton of output. So another thing about ribbons is they can be a little low in output, which makes them sort of preamp dependent. You need a good mic pre sometimes with certain ribbons in order to, to bump up the level and not increase the noise floor too much. And uh, they can just be somewhat problematic, especially if you're recording something quiet, like maybe strings with them. Uh, that is not going to be a problem with this microphone. Ton of output and yeah, just no reservations about this. I thought it just sounded great on electric guitar. Really nice thing about recording with a ribbon mic is it sounds a lot like the amp in the room. So if you get a great amp tone going and you're like, that sounds cool. You know, many times studio recordings, you can throw a mic up in the cab and you go in the control room and you listen, you're like, what? That sounds like nothing like what the amp sounds like in the room. That, that's not generally so with ribbon mics. They, they tend to reproduce the character that you're hearing coming out of the cabinet really, really nicely. And moving on to the ST159 now. This is a large diaphragm, multi-pattern uh, condenser microphone. It's got some really great features. I find it's got, a, I mean, I'm speaking through it now. It sounds cool, right? It's, it's got a really, really natural uh, reproduction, just, just a terrific sound. Um, nothing too hyped. It's not like super hyped on the top end or anything like that, like some condenser mics can be. Just a nice natural sound. Now, it's got multi-pattern situation going on here. So you can switch it between cardioid, uh, omni, or uh, figure eight. So for uh, both the acoustic guitar parts in the song at the beginning of the video, I spaced this mic back from the guitars about a foot and just about where the neck meets the body, something like that, or maybe a little bit into the body, between maybe the, uh, the sound hole and where the neck meets the body is where I had the mic pointed right at the guitar. And I used it in cardioid and got a really, really nice natural sound. So you're gonna hear those parts soloed outside of the mix in just a second here. Uh, so what else? I also used this microphone a little bit um, for the electric guitar parts. I had it spaced back from the speaker cabinets and pointed at the cabinet, maybe seven or eight feet back from the cabinet. And I put the microphone into Omni, um, which is really nice because then you can capture some ambience from you know bouncing off the walls uh, from behind as well as what's coming right out of the cabinet. So I just blended it in a little bit uh, with the ribbon microphone uh, for the electric guitar tracks and I thought it sounded just great. Just lends a little bit of air and life to the tracks. Really cool. So what I want to do now is solo some of those tracks from the song at the beginning of the video outside of the mix so you can really clearly hear these microphones and the way they capture the guitar sounds. <laughs>
I just wanted to relate a little story. I have some experience with these Sterling microphones, um, specifically back around 2003, I went to Guitar Center to buy my first recording setup, computer recording setup. And uh, I got a, a simple PreSonus interface and monitors, cables, things like that that I needed. And the other thing I got was a microphone, and it was the GT55 large diaphragm condenser microphone. Okay, not long after that, that microphone's name was changed to the ST55, and that's for Sterling. So same microphone that I have. Uh, the mic was $199, and I remember listening to it against a bunch of other mics. I couldn't afford much more than that. So I, I was listening to it against mics costing two and three times the price, just trying to find the best mic I could for the money. And I actually liked it more than, for instance, like the 414, which was about three times the price. I thought, this thing sounds great for $199. So I picked it up, and I've used it ever since. It's on my desk at home right now. I still use it to this day. I, used it for, I use it for voiceover and recording acoustic guitar in my home uh, setup now. That microphone, I've beat it up for years. I mean, it's going on 15 years old at this point, and I basically treat it like a 57, <laughs> and it just keeps on going. So I think it's a terrific sounding microphone, and uh, so that's my, my personal endorsement for a purchase I made uh, of a Sterling microphone. Alrighty, thanks for watching my video on the Sterling Microphones ST159 Large Diaphragm Multi-Pattern Condenser Microphone and also the ST170 Active Ribbon Mic. I wanted to mention both these come with these bird cages that you see here uh, included and uh, they also come in really nice uh, carrying cases and they will both handle a ton of level. I wanted to mention that. This one's 130 dB plus and this one is uh, 144 dB I believe before distortion. That's really crazy. Uh, and if you do want to record jet engines or something like that, it has a 10 dB uh, roll-off right on the front of the microphone here, and there's also a bass roll-off switch. Okay, you can check out these mics further at the website you see there on your screen. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Come back and see me for more videos real soon. I am Pete Thorne. Take care.